Hey guys and girls, welcome back to Heiko's Garage. Today I'm coming at you with another watch video. Watch in front of us is uh, not a vintage watch. Uh, I've owned it for about 15, uh, 16 years. Um, it was made as a special edition, a limited edition, um, actually initiated by one of my coworkers. Hey, let's make this watch and uh, let's see how many guys want one of those. We went to a German manufacturer, Junkers. Uh, it's one of those old watchmaking names that probably in the more recent past has turned into mass production, cheaper watches with quartz movements. Uh, and they do um, custom work. So you can order, you know, your own special design for your company or for, you know, someone as a retirement gift or something like that. I had already given up on finding out what model this watch exactly is, but then my coworker who initiated making this limited edition run uh, back in the days actually came through and he told me it's based on a uh, 150 year Hugo Junkers limited edition that uh, the Junkers watch brand had brought out. Uh, to the 150th anniversary of uh, Hugo Junkers, who was a pioneer scientist building aircrafts, airplanes, um, motors, and um, overall a great engineer and uh, uh, inventor. And they used that model as the base for customizations like the watch that you see now here in this video. And so one of my coworkers took it upon himself to create uh, a watch in memory of a helicopter that the German armed forces were retiring in 2006. The helicopter uh, that is actually printed here on the dial, the silhouette of this helicopter is a BO-105 made uh, by Messerschmitt, Bolkov and Blom. Uh, somewhere between the early 70s and uh, beginning of the early 2000s. Uh, it was in production quite long. Is a um, small twin engine helicopter that the German armed forces were operating, or in particular the German army. And I was uh, a German army B-105 pilot. So of course I wanted one of those watches. It's, um, yeah, the aviator style dial layout pretty clear nice numerals on there it's a 40 millimeter case 48 millimeter lug to lug and it has a date complication as well as a gmt hand or gmt complication so a 24 hour hand so it doesn't just tell you it's seven o'clock but it also tells you whether or not it's seven o'clock in the morning or 1900 military time um, in the evening leather strap with a deployant clasp push button release with a fold or flip over safety nothing fancy nothing high quality but it's pretty nice it's easy to put this watch on and take it off and also to open the wrist strap so we can take a look at the case back case back is uh, pretty simple pretty flat um, laser engraved it says german armed forces helicopter pilot limited edition number zero four out of 43 so 43 guys bought one of those watches it also has my my old german armed forces uh, pilot license number on it and my uh, first and last letter of my last name which used to be the initials that i used to use for um, stuff in the german army as you can see there's a quartz movement hidden under there with a movement ring holding it in the center and uh, really the only thing that I'm doing here right now is changing the battery this is a two-year two-year battery so every two years this thing just stops working and then I have to get another battery you're supposed to not use any uh, electrically conductive materials to pop the battery out most people use uh, plastic tweezers 
to do that. And uh, of course, Heiko is using a screwdriver for it. Pops out pretty easily and then uh, pops in pretty easily as well. Yeah, so this uh, limited edition, only 43 of those watches exist. And they were uh, decorated on the back with the coat of arms or the symbol of the German Army Aviation, which is the wings and the sword. And then every pilot got their individual personal pilot license number and their initials uh, engraved on there. It's only uh, water resistant to five atmospheres or five bar, which is an equivalent of 50 meters, which in uh, the watch industry is really barely water resistant. So with a watch like this, you got to be really careful. It's not a, a screw down crown. It, I mean, the case back is screw on and has a gasket in it. But um, yeah, you will definitely get water in there, even if you're just wearing it in the shower. So um, I made the mistake already a couple times. I, I don't like to wear watches uh, exposing them to uh, water when it's a leather strap. Most, you know, more sporty watches and uh, watches that I would wear for any kind of activity are usually a um, silicone strap or a stainless steel strap. Leather is definitely, at least in my book, meant for dress watches that you should definitely not get wet. So now I'm playing around with this battery here. It's giving me a little bit of a hard time. You have to uh, tug one side under and then uh, move a little spring clip that uh, kind of holds it in place. I decided to put it into my time lab movement holder just so that it f sits flat and doesn't move around all that easily. I'm still learning. I'm still practicing. That's why I um, do all those simple jobs before I get to the more complicated things, you know, ripping a movement apart and cleaning it and such. So we're still in battery change environment. And like I said, now, now I will not use uh, screwdrivers and uh, metallic tweezers anymore because you don't want to uh, cause a short circuit in the movement and then damage it and then you have a, a pretty paperweight. But I got lucky. I didn't cause any damage. I was able to get the battery in there without causing any trouble. Now I'm going to put this uh, movement ring back in there. Goes in in one orientation, one orientation only. And it's also pretty cheaply made. It was resisting installation quite a bit. It just doesn't want to slide down. I'm trying to push it down with uh, my tweezers. In the end, you will see me just use my fingers. I mean, at least I'm wearing finger cuts, so I'm not leaving any fingerprints behind. <laughs> Still struggling. And of course, you want it all centered and straight and all that. Now trying to make it slip down, slide down into the case. Eventually I will get it. The watch is definitely nothing special, but uh, it's uh, a reminder of a pretty good time in my life. Flying that particular helicopter in the German army, it was a anti-tank and reconnaissance helicopter and we did a lot of uh, low-level operations 10 feet off the ground 100 knots airspeed yanking and banking around uh, trees and was some fun flying the same type of helicopter is still being used for all kinds of operations all across the world and the most famous application is probably the helicopter in the red bull air race team that they use for aerobatics whenever there are big uh, Red Bull air races going on. So now we're putting the case back on. You can see the engraving there. Like I said, it's it's not not very fancy. It's just laser engraved, very superficial. Using my little time lab case back opening ball. 
I have since bought myself a, a JAXA tool, which uh, can tighten a case back a little bit uh, tighter. So, and there it is, uh, the clasp put back on the wrist strap. Now I'm going to uh, struggle with setting it a little bit because uh, the, the crown has two settings. All the way out, you just set your time. You can see it's a hacking movement. So the, the seconds hand stands still, doesn't move while you're setting the time. You can see that the red GMT hand, the 24 hour hand, uh, can be moved separately, individually. So you can first set your time, let's say, you know, 11 a.m. And then you move the GMT hand to 11 instead of 2300. And then it also, of course, has a uh, position where you can set the date complication all individually. So that's pretty nice. Uh, now, as I'm spinning the hands there, you can see that the GMT hand, the 24-hour hand is following around. That's what it's supposed to do. It's kind of funny how um, here in the U.S. it's so common to use AM and PM. The rest of the world literally uses the 24-hour clock. So uh, 1 PM is 1300. I grew up with that and especially in the military that's a very common thing. Having having that hand kind of helps. I guess if if you're somewhere where you can't see the sun, you don't know if it's night or day. You can either uh, you can easily find out uh if it's AM or PM. Now there's the clasp one last time with a fold over safety, two push buttons on the side. Pretty good looking watch. Like I said, nothing fancy. I think since we had it made in such small numbers, I think I spent around two hundred fifty dollars at a time at the time, which uh, yeah could be considered pretty expensive for a watch like this. All right, now it's running for another two years. You guys, uh, I thank you for watching and for joining me. And uh, if you want to see more content from my channel, please give me a thumbs up so I know to go ahead with more videos and then uh, if you like you can subscribe and be notified when I post new content. Thank you guys. See you in the next one. Bye.